You need to relax, and that is the focus of today's video. Happy Saturday, everybody. Excited to dive into five tips, five things you need to do to win NFL Fantasy Football Week 4. I'm going to give you guys the latest news and notes as well, so you're on top of the injuries, so you guys know what's up with some top players, including Devontae Smith, who's out, Devontae Adams, guys like that. We need to dive into that, give you guys the latest news and notes, and also five tips on how to win the week, including a bonus one. I'm going to give you guys right now. First one, you know, you to relax. Now, if you got 16 rounds, you're looking pretty good. we got a lot of winners this year. A couple guys fell through the cracks. We're going to talk about that in this video. But overall, we're doing great, 16 rounders. Now, if you are new to the channel, guys, make sure you guys do smash it, tap it, slap it, hit the thumbs up. I'm excited to dive into everything to get you guys ready here for NFL Week 4, but we go year round. So hit the thumbs up. And drop a question below. I'll try to get to as many questions as I humanly possibly can here on this Saturday. Drop a start and sit question. I'll see if I can get to it. Uh, if you guys want guaranteed access, of course, join the front lines. I've linked it below here. Amazing community. Make sure you guys join that. All right. I've also released a brand new uh, program here called the Counselor's Edge where I deliver all my NFL picks against the spread and the money line. Counselor's Edge, guys. Get the edge. Win some coin. Get in on the edge right now below. I'm going to pin the comment here. Make sure you guys do join, okay? So let's talk about the latest news and notes here and five tips. Again, the first one is just relax. That's your bonus tip. Just relax, okay? You're going to win the week. You got to have confidence, right? First tip as we head into NFL week four is stay on top of the news. So if you have a particular player, you definitely don't want to start him if he's going to be banged up. So let's go over some of the news here and, and get you guys up to date. Again, I'm recording this Saturday afternoon. Things may change between now and, you know, game start time. So stay on top of the news. What I do simply is I just look up my player's name. I write it through Google, hit news, and I check it out. Or I'm on X, and I'm usually checking out and following certain pages, and I get I get inside information, or not even inside, public information that I get, and I turn notifications on. But I also, I'm offering breaking news on my IG. If you turn on my story mode on Instagram, on my story mode, turn on, you know, notifications to my posts and everything, I deliver the news as well there so you guys can stay on top of the latest news and notes. On my Instagram at Fantasy Football Accounts, or turn on notifications there. All right, Sam Laporta is expected to play an ankle thing now. Again, I always get concerned with certain players being limited. That's what I don't want. I don't want to start somebody and they get limited. So make sure you guys, if you do have a better option to Laporta, maybe you might want to do that, okay? But Sam Laporta is expected to play. Tyler Huntley, the quarterback, for Miami is going to be starting the backup. The third stringer is going to be starting uh, versus Tennessee this week. Now, this is going to ripple down, obviously, to Tyreek Hill. Tyreek's had two bad weeks under seven points. I think last week he just had seven points. The week before it was like 6.6 .6 fantasy points PPR. Not good, man, if you're a Tyreek Hill owner. Um, yeah, not good. So just be cognizant of that and be aware that it's going to, it's going to affect him. Now, there's sometimes, you know, backups come in or guys that have had years to watch run out or older guys including Andy Dalton last year in the help situation. Hopefully Tyler Huntley does that if you're a Tyreek Hill owner or uh, any type of Miami Dolphins receiver owner in, in any way or fashion, okay? So Tyler Huntley starting at quarterback. Jordan Love, now here's the thing. He's going to start. Now there is word. I just heard this. Malik Willis. There's a chance there's a bunch of package plays designed for him this week. Now that bothers me. Now we're starting to go quarterback by committee. Not cool. Now, they obviously want to probably test the waters to see if Jordan Love is going to be good to go. And if he is, he's going to be on the field for most of the time, hopefully. But if you have a better option than Jordan Love, you may want to consider starting him this week. Again, just simply because I'm hearing Malik Willis is going to get certain packages. I don't know, man. Like, why am I going to see Malik Willis on the field if I'm starting Jordan Love? I don't like that. I mean, that being said, it could be a Jordan Love absolutely amazing week. We don't know. You don't know what you don't know, but again, a little bit of concerning there. If I hear Malik Willis is going to be on the field for some plays, could be more than we want, right, as a Jordan Love owner, right? Uh, Evan Ingram is going to be, uh, <clears throat> from what I hear, he's uh, no IR. He's not going to be on IR. Uh, that's what head coach saying. He has a hamstring thing, but no indication he's going to continue on and miss more time. Evan Ingram owners look into that. Alvin Kamara is questionable with his ribs. He's having some hip issues, ribs. So Alvin Kamara... Watch and monitor that. Chris Olave hamstring is day-to-day. -day. Keenan Allen should play. He had a heel injury. Again, this guy, I, I don't like Keenan Allen. He's an injury-prone guy. Sucks. 
and in a in a situation, suspect quarterback. I told you to avoid him. People were drafting him. It is what it is. But uh, he should play this week. Uh, Devonte Adams is out. No timetable on return. We talk about this. It, you know that's why you got to draft the optimal roster because what ends up happening, guys, is these guys have their over the cliff year, and it might be it for for Devonte Adams this this week. So uh, this year actually. So he's going to be out. No timetable to return. George Kittle. Uh, his hammy, he's supposed to be back this week. Debo Samuel is questionable. Devontae Smith is out. Justin Herbert uh, should be back. Ankle is bothering him. Austin Eckler with his concussion is going to be out this week. Cooper Cup is also ru- ruled out with the ankle. And Addison is back as well. So that's some latest news and notes here on some big names. Uh, again, check your local listings. Check on your players. Again, you want to make sure that your player, including guys like Jordan Love, are not going to be limited. Sam Laporta as well. Again, I'm hearing, you know, they're back, but like, you know, questionable day to day. Example, Olave, questionable, right? Day to day. Maybe Rashid Shahid might be worth starting. He might get a ton of volume this week. So use common sense. So that's tip number one. Stay on top of the news, and there's the news for you, okay? Hey guys, just want to take a quick break to tell you to head on over to mybookie.ag. This is the place I go to enhance my game watching experience. Head on over there right now, guys. Use code FFC and you get a 100% match deposit. It's like playing with their house money, guys. It's absolutely amazing, guys. Go over there right now for spreads, for bets, for everything. Mybookie.ag. The code you want to use is FFC upon sign up. Again, you get a hundred percent match deposit up to a thousand bucks. This is amazing, guys. Get in on the action right now. Mybookie.ag. Football is back. I'm telling you guys. Once you guys get in on this, it's going to enhance that game watching experience. Mybookie.ag. The code is FFC. That's for fantasy football accounts, sir. Upon sign up to get all the perks, go create an account right now. Put in your first deposit and take advantage of this amazing deal. Let's get back to the show. Uh, tip number two, start your volume getters. At this point, we have a point of reference. We've had three weeks under our belt. Start your volume getters. Now, everyone's asking me if I should start Brian Thomas Jr. His targets looked good last year, last week, right? They've been looking pretty good. Start your volume getters. Guys, This is this is very, very important because... These guys are going to continue to eat based on what we've seen for the past three years. I look back, how they do this week, how they look do this, this week, how they look the week before. I also do a must start video. Go back, check that out. And at the release that, I believe Wednesday or Thursday every week, go back and check that. I put this out for you guys so you can see, you know, the, the data on this guy, I put up a chart and everything. So we talk about it. So start your volume getters. I know it sounds like common sense, but common sense ain't that common anymore. So you need to, be aware of that. Look back. Who's getting the volume on the team? Who's the one? Make sure you guys start those guys, okay? That's tip number two. I know it's common sense, but let's keep going. Number three, look at matchups, but don't always predicate all of your analysis just on matchups, okay? Now, again, in that must start video, a couple videos back, I release every single week, I talk about this, guys, okay? I talk about the optimal matchups. Now, sometimes your starter, let's just say Josh Allen has a tough matchup versus position. I'm not going to bench Josh Allen coming off a 30-point week just because he has a tougher matchup. So again, use logical common sense. You're looking at tip number two. Okay, I'm looking at a lot of volume. Then I got to take a look at matchup, and I'm putting it all together because you one part of winning fantasy is have, obviously having a big draft, and a big part of it is making executive start and sit decisions, and these are the key elements to win. So if you're looking at starts and sits for week four, are they getting a lot of volume, and how tough is their matchup? Tip number four, guys. You got to learn to let go, accept defeat. Now, for example, I'm defeated when it comes to Zamir White. You know, three bad weeks at an easy matchup last week versus Carolina. Crap the bed. He's riding my bench. He has another bad week. Uh, he's off to free agency. And that's the thing, right? And I told you guys that got 16 rounds. You got to go running back heavy early. I've got Henry. I've got I've got Barkley and a lot of my teams. Another team I got by Jan. Listen, I've got a lot of running backs you know, the, the, those early round running backs that are anchoring my team because I got to fill those two running back spots. And I'm doing that knock on wood very, very well. Samir White was like my RB3. He crapped the bed. He's riding the pine. You know, I was fortunate enough to win starting Samir White last week. He had a terrible week, but, you know, I relied on Josh Allen. I anchored my team with an ace quarterback, which I explained in 16 rounds. Barkley crushed it for me. Henry had a great week. My team did well, okay? So that is because I made executive decisions in the draft. Now, looking at... You know, Zamir, I'm going to bench him. So going back to my point, accept defeat. If there's certain players that you invested high draft capital in, 
and they're not performing, it's time to bench him. Now you're saying, well, Joe, I drafted Tyreek Hill, right? And, you know, he had two bad weeks. He's got Huntley starting at quarterback. I, I don't know if I should start Tyreek Hill. And that's a good good situation, good question to ask. Should I start Tyreek Hill? And I don't know because I don't know who else you have. If you have a volume getter, maybe like a Brian Thomas Jr. on your bench, you may want to plug him in. But then again, you got to take a look at the matchup. Who's got the easier matchup? Maybe Tyreek's got a good matchup. Go back and check the video on matchups, right? And that's, I don't have the, all the optimal plays right now in front of me, but I, I also release this in the fantasy frontline community with all the optimal players, but, and, and in my videos, but what I'm saying is you got to look at matchups, you got to look at volume, and you got to learn to accept defeat, which is again, tip number four, and make the proper start and sit decision to win your leagues, okay? All right, let's talk about tip number five here. And this is the most important tip right now is you got to believe in your team, right? Losing faith and having a negative energy around your team is not good, okay? You guys, listen, you want to maximize the points that you, you have, right? You want to maximize. So if you have two running back spots, Last, last week, I had Henry and Barkley, top of the depth chart, volume getters. I maximized those running back positions, right? You want to take a look at who on your roster, based on the first three weeks, based on the, the data, on the targets, on the volume, on the talent. Who on your roster are you going to start that's going to maximize your position? But you have to believe in them. You cannot go in there saying, oh, man, you know, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable with this guy. If you're not feeling that guy, you probably don't want to start him. Okay, this is very, very important, guys. You got to have the, this is why I teach the line mentality, right? So when you are going into, you know, NFL week four, again, let me recap here. Stay on top of the news, all right? If you feel your player is going to be limited, you may want to bench him, okay? Tip number one is stay on top of the news. Tip number two, let's just recap here. You want to always start the volume getters. Tip number three, you want to look at matchups, okay? Tip number four, you want to accept defeat. You got to go back. You got to go back and look and say, hey, this guy's not performing. It's time to cut him. It's time to bench him. Or, hey, I drafted this guy, like tip number five. I believed in him. Maybe I'll just bench him this week. Maybe he just had a bad three weeks. Maybe there's something there. That's what I'm doing with Zimir White, right? Because I don't see Madison as competition because he sucks, right? So again, you got to you gotta learn how to make these executive decisions. You got to know how to hold, when to hold them, know when to fold them, guys. And that's what you got to do to win, okay, guys? So if you're new to the channel, I implore you, smash it, tap it, slap it, hit the thumbs up. Go back and check my video on the must-starts because that's going to give you a major, major insight on how to win your leagues, okay, guys? Your, your weeks, that is. Sorry. Go back, check the must start video, subscribe, hit the thumbs up, and drop your question below, guys. Have yourself an outstanding Saturday. Drop your question below. I'll try to get to as many as I possibly can. All right, go smash week four. Use these tips. Stay on top of the news and believe in your roster. Starts and sits. I know starts and sits are tough, but if you implement these strategies, you will win. And finally, just learn to relax a little bit. Have a great Saturday. I'm out.